Digshoe.com. Greetings to everyone out there in the No DQ Galaxy. Welcome to a No DQ video here on NoDQ.com and the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Rift, no DQ. I have your questions today from twitter.com slash Aaron Rift using the hashtag no DQ turns 20. Let's go ahead and get started. First one comes from They See Me Rollins. Going by the creative team's record, do you really think the Velveteen Dream will now be a big star on the main roster? I have a feeling he will end up doing comedy with Gold Dust and R Truth. I think he will. I've seen people talk about Vevateen Dream and there is this belief that he will be the future of WWE. When I look at him, I see him oozing charisma. The guy just has it. And he has gotten so good in a very short period of time. Reminds me of guys like Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar. He just gets it. He he gets professional wrestling. He gets sports entertainment. And he's young. He has a lot of years ahead if he doesn't get hurt. I think if the cards align properly, Velveteen Dream will be a major superstar in WWE. And he's one of my predictions to be that top-level guy. I think he will be WWE champion one day. He's got nothing but time, he's got the youth, he's got the look. He has all the attributes to be a major star, in my opinion. So, I would be surprised if WWE dropped the ball with him, because he has it. And I think, as the saying goes, the cream rises to the top. This one comes from Jason Bush. Would you be interested in eventually seeing a match between The Rock and Velveteen Dream? Maybe WrestleMania 35, but would be too soon for Dream, but Dream is the perfect young superstar for The Rock to put over. I agree with you about WrestleMania 35 being too soon. I think Velveteen Dream needs a few years to really blossom as a top-level superstar. You just don't throw him in there with The Rock at WrestleMania. He needs time to develop and gain more experience and just further... Um, develop his character and and really become something special in WWE and that takes time it, it just isn't gonna happen overnight he has the tools to be a top guy but he needs the push and he needs the experience and just working on the big stages with the other top names that are currently there in WWE but yeah eventually maybe three years down the line Velveteen Dream after having several matches with guys like Roman Reigns or Seth Rollins or AJ Styles. Maybe by that point he'll be big enough to where you could put him in there with The Rock. He has to be up there though. The Rock isn't going to come back for just any random match. It has to be something significant. So if Rock's going to come back, it has to be against a guy who has been well established and is that guy that can be the top star in the company. So time will tell if Velveteen can become that guy. This one comes from Aaron Lewis. Hey Aaron, who do you think out of the NXT roster has the most potential to be portrayed as the next big underdog character, a la Daniel Bryan when they get to the main roster? Johnny Gargano? Maybe even Ricochet? Naturally, the smaller guys are going to be more suitable for that role. I don't think somebody like Velveteen Dream would be right for that role, but certainly a guy like Johnny Gargano, people are already comparing him to Daniel Bryan as far as being this great underdog babyface goes. So he has to be at the top of the list. Somebody like Ricochet might be able to fit that role. Um, there are other guys in NXT that are on the rise that could potentially fit that role as well, but... I would, I would say Gargano is the closest thing to the next Daniel Bryan that WWE has. Will he get that push that Bryan got? That remains to be seen. Um, as we all know, Bryan had to fight a lot of uphill battles. But again, like I said earlier, the cream rises to the top. Johnny Gargano has the talent 
and I think that will carry him. And unless WWE just has a total vendetta against the guy, I think he'll be a big deal. The question is, can you make the underdog storyline work again with him? I think by the time he is on the main roster, I think enough time has passed since Daniel Bryan's run that I think they could recreate that in a way and hopefully change it up a bit to make it different enough, but just follow a, a similar path to build him up as a big superstar. Got this one here from Kyle Allen. You have a problem with calling Brock Lesnar the worst universal champion of all time, and what does that say when Roman or whoever wins the title from Brock Lesnar? That's a very valid point, basically calling him the worst champion. Now, Angle did not mean he's the worst in terms of skills. He means he's the worst champion in terms of actually defending the title on a regular basis and showing up. Um, but man, I would not even call Lesnar the worst champion or even the second worst champion. Um, really, I think he's the second best champion after Kevin Owens. Owens had a lengthy title reign and was defending it regularly, even though he was winning with the outside interference and the shenanigans. Brock, if anything, Brock wins his matches in a dominant fashion, which no other universal champion has done. So it, it is an absurd statement, not just because it makes Lesnar look bad and doesn't really make sense, but also it's not really true. And baby faces should not be lying. Uh, the universal title hasn't exactly had the best run so far. Finn Balor won it and then immediately had to forfeit due to injury. Owens had it, but like I said, most of his victories were cheap and he was positioned as a guy who fluked into the title and was handed it rather than winning it in the ring clean. Goldberg won it, but it was that whole interference from Jericho and then Goldberg lost it right away to Lesnar. So one could even argue Lesnar is actually the best universal champion, despite the fact that he rarely shows up because at least he won the title clean and he has won a lot of matches over a period of a year and a half. Um, he has won several matches clean, so he has the credibility as champion. So yeah, wasn't really effective in my opinion, Kurt Angle saying that. Got this one here from JL. How far down the line until WWE creates an all women's show? If it was overseen by Triple H, it would probably be dope. Somebody joked on Twitter that there already is an all-women's show and it's called Total Divas, but if we're talking about an all-women's wrestling show, I did touch on this during No DQ Live. I'm really not a fan of more content. I think WWE has enough content. There's too many shows as it is. Could they do a women's show? Absolutely. Would not shock me if they did. Do I think it's optimal? Not really. I don't think it's going to lead to more subscribers necessarily. Maybe it'll increase um, WWE's popularity with women, but I, I think whatever increase there has been from the female audience, I think that has already been done with the women being taken more seriously on television and on pay-per-views. So I don't know if doing the pay-per-view is going to lead to casual female viewers out there saying, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna subscribe to the WWE Network just because they're doing all women's wrestling shows. I don't think there's gonna be too many people doing that. Um, if WWE did decide to do it, then I, I would hope that they would eliminate a show or two or replace it, um, replace one of the other shows with the women's show and not add it on top of everything else that we're already getting. It's just too much. Got this one here from It's the Costanza. Hey Aaron, due to a recent tweet that Matt Hardy sent out, is he officially retired or is it a temporarily, uh, temporary leave of absence? Or is he going to smack down with Jeff? Who knows? He's not officially retired. The word right now is that he's trying to rehab what's going on. And I think with Matt Hardy, he's just, he's beat up from all the years of doing those physical matches, doing the big bumps in the ladder matches, and Jeff even did bigger bumps, but Matt did a lot of crazy stuff too, and um, time is catching up with him. Um, I think the tweets, they were sent out to just let fans know he's not gonna be around forever, and 
I think we might start to see him wind his career down, especially if whatever rehab he's doing isn't working. Um, I could see Matt, if he's able to stay healthy enough, wrestling maybe a year or two and maybe just sticking more to the comedy, um, doing the broken gimmick and, and doing skits, doing maybe a few more matches in the style of the final deletion. I could see that, but as far as him going out there and doing the big spots that he used to do, I think those days are definitely winding down, and I think that's why he sent out those tweets. Got this one here from Daza2000 plus six, so 20006. Is Shawn Michaels Kurt Angle's best opponent? Interesting question there. I was at WrestleMania 21, and in my opinion, that was the best live match I have ever seen in my life. That was an incredible match. For a one-night opponent, Shawn Michaels perhaps was Kurt Angle's greatest opponent. But as far as an actual feud goes that spanned more than one match, I mean, Angle and Michaels did have a rematch, but I don't think it was quite as good as WrestleMania. Um, you know, it's a word we're not supposed to say, but Benoit. Chris Benoit, Kurt Angle, 2003 Royal Rumble. Benoit and Angle just had that chemistry that not too many guys have. Every time they got in the ring, it was something special. So I might go with Benoit, but there are a lot of guys that Kurt Angle had chemistry with and had some great matches with. All right, this next one comes from Stefan Osborne. Hey Aaron, you have a magic lamp, but instead of three wishes from a genie, Vince McMahon gives you three creative decisions, big or small, on either brand. What do you request? This is quite the loaded question because there are a lot of things I would like to change, but the three off the top of my head. First of all, Raw goes back to two hours. That is easily my number one. Number two, Get rid of the segments where it starts off with a promo and then the GM comes out and says, you guys are going to have a match and this match starts now. And then you have the same guys that were in the opening segment doing a lengthy match and all that combined is like the first 35, 40 minutes of the show. That's the second thing I would scrap. And then the third thing, another thing I would scrap, I mean... The creative decisions for me, I'm just getting rid of things. Uh, the third one would be those singles matches where there's outside interference and then a bunch of people run in and during a commercial break, the GM turns it into a tag team match. Get rid of those segments or just do them once a year or something like that. So those would be my three off the top of my head. But there are a lot of things I would like to change about Raw and just WWE in general, but those are my three. Got this one here from Rollins versus Styles, please. What's the story with the Royal Rumble picture in the background? Did you go to that pay-per-view? And if so, what were your thoughts on it and what grade would you give it? That was the 2013 Royal Rumble in Phoenix, Arizona. I went to that and it was a fun show. I did enjoy it. I think it was flawed though. I did like seeing The Rock versus CM Punk, and that was actually the reason I went. As soon as the Royal Rumble, well not when the Royal Rumble was announced, I think it was announced before Raw 1000 actually. I think the tickets had actually already gone on sale. When Raw 1000 happened and CM Punk turned heel and attacked The Rock, that's when I decided to buy the Royal Rumble ticket. Because I figured Rock is coming back. And I, I, I wanted to see The Rock. Knowing it could be his last run. That was my motivation for going. I enjoyed seeing CM Punk versus The Rock. I enjoyed the Rumble match. It was fun. It was actually my second Rumble. The first one being in 1999. I thought Cena winning was predictable. But I did enjoy that Rumble. There were some nice surprises. Chris Jericho... Gold Dust. All in all, it was a fun show. The No DQ meetup afterwards was amazing. We had a great turnout for that. 
and everyone was really nice. Shout out to all you guys out there that attended that meetup. Ed, Robert, you guys were great. That'll do it for this edition of No DQ Video. Thank you all so much for watching and continuing to support NoDQ.com. Stay tuned to the channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ for the very latest in the world of WWE. And stay tuned. I will be back next time for more.